Oh, wow. Wow. That was such a blind guess, and it actually worked. Holy crap, Ubuntu. Get your shit together. <laughs> G'day folks, Jordan here with a new software overview video. Today we're briefly looking at Ubuntu 13.04 Raring Ringtail released on the 25th of April 2013. And the reason why I'm saying we're briefly taking a look at this operating system today is because, to put it really, really bluntly, there's nothing new. And I'm serious when I say this, the only difference that I can think of that's worth talking about is the fact that there is this Windows Ubuntu installer sort of thing that ran on top of Windows, and they dropped that feature because it didn't work on Windows 8. That's it. That is literally the only major change. I am dead serious. So we're just going to get right into this and check out the website, as I think it's probably going to be a lot more interesting than, well, talking about things that really don't make sense. So the website actually got a redesign. The background is now a solid color and the tabs at the top look a little bit different. So it actually has like buttons that are outlined at the very top of the website. Now, most of it pretty much looks the same. There is actually a notice of like Ubuntu on the phone, which actually was a thing. I don't know if that's gonna load, but we'll see if it does. And they actually had Ubuntu mobile on a phone. And if you don't believe me, look it up. Uh, it was a failed project. In fact, it might even still be going in third world countries, kind of like the Firefox OS, which essentially all this is is just web wrappers and stuff. But yeah, kind of one of these side projects of Canonicals. So it's kind of cool. It did work for a while. It would be kind of interesting to take a look at an Ubuntu phone, but I don't feel like wanting to import one because honestly, they're probably not worth it. But hey, it is kind of cool. And interestingly, they have Ubuntu for Android, but here they talk about the minimum specifications for an Ubuntu smartphone, being that you needed uh, one gigahertz Cortex A9 with 512 to one gig of RAM, uh, four to eight gigs of storage with SD card and multi-touch. And of course, if you had a more powerful phone, you could have an Intel Atom like some of the Asus phones back then and have minimum one gig of RAM and 32 gigs of storage and so on and so forth. And of course you could also dock the phone and have it turn into a PC, pretty much like Continuum, except Ubuntu was first to it, which is actually kind of cool. Of course the Windows Continuum thing didn't take off as we all know, but it's still pretty cool to see that back in the day, man, they were on top of things with the ideas. Of course, again, Ubuntu OS far from took off, but I think it was still pretty cool, a really cool project. But we're not here to talk about the mobile thing entirely. We're looking at the desktop OS today, and really, I don't see too much that's different. I mean, sure, the Dash definitely had a updated look to it with having the ability to see music albums inside of the Dash from a search query, and maybe there were some slight updates and maybe some security improvements, but Otherwise, nothing really new. Um, in terms of the feature set, we can take a look at that too, but I don't really think there's too much in the way of difference that would really warrant anything. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say. So let's jump right into the installation with which I already have, or I did have, the VMware Fusion thing, there we are. So we can go ahead and install from a disk and uh, Unfortunately, this I can't get working in a VM. I'm gonna to have to do this on a standalone computer. This is a future video for sure, which we'll be taking a look at, which I think is kind of interesting because of its name. But we're not jumping into that today. We are looking at Ubuntu, of course. And I think for today's video, we're gonna change things up a little bit, I think. We're gonna do easy install because I'm feeling brave. And I believe at this point, we can pretty much just use uh, easy install for the rest of the OSs that we take a look at in this series. So I'm gonna go in, configure it for two processor cores and two gigs of RAM like I normally do, and then we can jump right in. And it will literally install itself. Just because I figure this OS literally does not have a hell of a lot going for it at all, we're just gonna make this video as short as possible to just get it out of the way. Because boring releases really don't need long videos at all, and this is a certainly one of them. 
Now, interestingly, we actually got an improved screen resolution this time around, so I'm still gonna go full screen, actually, come to think of it, but it's nice that we actually got an improved resolution by default, at least so far, of 1360 by 768, it looked like. Uh-oh, we had a kernel panic. My caps lock light is blinking. Uh-oh, uh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Uh, of course, as soon as I do something like that, everything has to go wrong. Ah, uh, come on, man. This is why people don't run Linux. Of course, stupid crap like this has to go wrong. Okay, resume. I'm just going to go ahead and reset it, and we'll just see if we can boot it up manually. Um, yeah, I still believe in the caps lock light. All right, restart. Try again. Let's see, I'm dead. Oh, I've access to the boot menu. Oh, you're kidding me. I have to do the whole VM again? Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, this is going to suck. Okay, off camera, I'm going to try to see if I can get this to work. Because if I'm going to have to dig out a standalone computer to run this, that is going to suck big time. Okay, so I went through and I turned off easy install on a new thing. And I tried booting it up again and wah, wah, wah. Yep. We're going to have to dig out a surrogate computer. Just what I did not want to do today. Because, of course, it has to kernel panic on the startup. Of course. Okay. I'm going to set up a surrogate. And we will go to crappy freehand camera style. And take a look at this operating system. Of course, the most boring of releases has to be done on a surrogate. Because it literally will not work on a VM. My luck. Okay. Jump cut. So today's surrogate machine of choice is going to be the Panasonic Toughbook CFC1 from 2012, presumably. This features a Core i5-2520M and Intel HD Graphics 3000. So we're going to go ahead and use this for today's video because it's new enough to where I don't think we're going to have a problem. The only thing that I don't know if it's going to work or not, and I doubt that it is, is going to be the sound because this machine unfortunately falls under one of these issues with the sound where literally it, only the sound will come out of the headphone jack but not the speaker because the way the audio drivers are laid out in Linux right now and nobody seemed to be committed to fixing it. So this machine will probably forever be without sound on Linux unless you use something out of the headphone jack. Which is unfortunate because this is a pretty nice Linux machine. It's very very fast because it has an SSD in it and it's very responsive very very responsive all right well that's a start there's no kernel panic <laughs> that's a good sign and uh i think we're gonna go ahead and connect to the wi-fi real quick and this touchpad whoa is it sensitive whoa is it sensitive all right now one thing i do want to try is the touch screen because it does have a touch screen on it and as you can see it does actually work which is pretty cool and i actually can click on buttons so that's pretty cool um, I like that feature. That is pretty nice. So I think we'll try to use the touch screen for this. Um, no detected operating systems. That's a lie because currently Kubuntu 18.10 is installed. But no matter. Well, you just format the whole drive. Doesn't really matter. This has a Samsung CM87 SSD, 128 gig. And also my apologies for the flicker. This is a really cheap TN panel, but the touch screen function has to work somehow. And uh, this is an early capacitive touch screen on a computer, or at least early enough for me that I own to where it'll just work with your finger, not necessarily just the stylus, because uh, I'm old school like that. Anywho, I'm on partition already. Okay, there it goes, it's working now. The touch input on this works a heck of a lot better than it does on Kubuntu, because Kubuntu really doesn't even know what to do with a touch screen, because uh, you could click on things, but it wouldn't click. If you know what I mean. I'm kind of curious. Can we get the touch keyboard to work? I wonder how you can figure that. Um, let's see. Can you actually configure it to have an on-screen keyboard? Um, keyboard shortcut. Maybe we're disabled. Control space. Um, interesting. I wonder how you would configure this. Um, that's no, Chinese. Okay. Screw that idea then. <laughs> I'm not going to try to configure an on-screen keyboard. Not really worth my time. Alright. And away we go with the rest of the installation. Oh my god, it's already into installing system. It's already copied everything over. That's crazy. I do like the rearing ringtail thing. That is that is actually kind of cool. And uh, the same quote is there in uh, 12.10 and 13.04 and 
probably subsequent versions of Ubuntu. I have no idea. Um, of course, all the typical stuff that we've seen before. Nothing really new other than maybe the difference in the wallpaper. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and pause the video for now. And I will come back once this is installed because this may take a while. This is actual hardware after all. And the joys just keep on coming. The system is running in low graphics mode. Your screen, graphics card, and input device settings could not be detected correctly. You will need to configure these yourself. Gee, thanks. <sighs> what would you like to do? Run in low graphics mode for just one session and reconfigure graphics. Sure. Let's reconfigure the graphics and totally bork the install. Ah, that sounds pretty good. Use default. I can't do that. Why? It was just working in the live environment too. I don't even know. Just run in low graphics mode. Stand by one minute while the display restarts. I'm waiting. I'm not going to type in this just in case it starts the graphic environment once again, but I don't think it's going to do that. So, um, yeah, that's nice. Um, probably going to have to go find yet another computer to run this on. Oh, wow. Wow. That was such a blind guess, and it actually worked. Holy crap, Ubuntu. Get your shit together. Maybe I have a broken ISO or something. I have no idea, but regardless, I'm in the user interface. I'm going to take it for what it is and get on with the rest of this video. All right. So what's new? Well, not a whole heck of a lot. The dash isn't in full screen for some reason. We can put it that way, though, if we wanted to. Now... If you've ever seen Ubuntu 13.10, this is probably going to look very familiar to you. Now, the differences are a little minute. Um, the, this section right here is still there in 13.10. There's also another section too. And I'm saying this because I literally just got done making that video before I started doing this one, fun fact. And because uh, I wanted to spend some more time getting this to work if it wasn't going to work. Um, but obviously, as you can see, it seems working fine now, even though we're in low graphics mode for some reason, apparently, even though we're running beautifully fine on the Intel HD 3000 with literally nothing nothing wrong with anything, which just makes no sense whatsoever. But, you know, you yeah, know. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's nice. Okay, well, that pretty much takes care of that. <laughs> All right, at least it runs well on something. All right, well, before we go, of course, we're gonna take a look at Firefox. Wow, that runs really smooth. I mean, very smooth on this machine. Firefox 20 comes with this release, and I believe LibreOffice is probably still version 3 point something or another. Nope, it is version 4.0.2.2. Nice. But yeah, these animations are wonderfully smooth way better than the VM, but it comes at the cost of having like no volume and no audio because again, this machine suffers from that same stupid audio bug they've had for over five years now where nothing comes out of the speaker, but it's glad to come out of the headphone jack, which is just stupid. Anyway, that'll be it for this video, I believe. So we're going to go ahead and shut down from root because it's probably not the smartest idea to be running this in root. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on with our lives now that we're done with this. So appreciate you all coming to watch, and I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>